I'm Scott, that Swish guy from Swish Chemsol, and today I'm going to show you how to destroy the coronavirus while safely disinfecting those surfaces. So let's get started. Over the past little while we've sold a tremendous amount of disinfectant because of the new coronavirus. And I think that's all coming from a good place. People are just trying to do a really good job when they're disinfecting and cleaning their surfaces. Uh, I think people are worried and scared right now. They don't know what's going on in the world. So I get questions like, uh, you know, how much, how much do I need to mix uh, this disinfectant at? Is it going to be better if I mix twice as much or three times as much? Is it going to work faster when I do that? How long do I need to let it dwell on a surface? Should I add some bleach? Because somebody told me that bleach is a really good thing uh, to add to my water. Should I add some vinegar? Because somebody told me that uh, vinegar was a really good idea to add. So right off the bat, don't mix any of these cleaning chemicals together. I think the first thing we need to understand is how difficult is it to destroy the coronavirus. So what you're looking at here is called the descending order of resistance to disinfectants. And these are bacteria, viruses in a rank order of toughest to kill to easiest to kill. And the first one on the list, class called bacterial endospores. And an example of this is C. difficile. Fun fact, with this one, if there's a product, if you've ever been shopping, you've read a label and it says kills 99.9% .9 of all bacteria, this one, this one that you're looking at, is the 0.01% that it doesn't kill. Fun little fact for you. The next one we have, number two, mycobacteria. An example of that is uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis. Most of us has, have heard of that one. And again, you don't have to remember these classes or these families or, or the specific virus names. What I want you to get from this is where on this chart is the family of coronaviruses. So as we go down the list, we've got small non-enveloped viruses, uh, the example being norovirus. Then we run into the fungi or the mold and yeast as an example. Gram-negative bacteria, we're using E. coli. It's a foodborne illness. There's our example there. Then we get into large non-enveloped viruses. The rotavirus is a good example. Almost at the bottom of the list here, gram-positive vegetative bacteria. Staphylococcus aureus is our example. Finally, the most susceptible, the easiest to kill, is the family of enveloped viruses, which include all the coronaviruses, including COVID-19. 19. Now don't get me wrong, because it's the easiest kill to kill, that's, I'm not saying you can slack off and do half of a job. I'm just trying to make the point that it is a very e easy virus to kill. Read the label directions on the disinfectant you're using and you'll be just fine. The government of Saskatchewan recently came out with this document and this is fantastic. I'm really impressed with this. There's a bunch of good information on here. We're going to go a little bit deeper because if you're that professional and you're cleaning the and disinfecting the facility, there's more knowledge that you need that's beyond this document. So what do we need to know? Frequent cleaning and disinfection. And that's important because those are two separate steps. There's a cleaning step and then a disinfection step. And we're going to talk about that in a bit. Many common household and commercial disinfectant products will destroy the COVID-19 virus. Some of the disinfectants will have an eight-digit drug identification number and these products are approved for use by Health Canada. So let's take a look at a few labels and see what those drug identification numbers are. So you have a look here. We've got Chemsol's Aerex 44 Plus. It's a detergent and a disinfectant. And you can see that green circle. We've magnified it. That is the, D, the DIN number. Any registered disinfectant has to have a DIN number. If it doesn't have a DIN number on the label, then it's, it's not a disinfectant. That's how you identify it. Here we've got a Swish Miracle. This is a ready-to-use disinfectant spray and wipe. Again, it's a cleaner and a disinfectant. And you can see this one's on the left-hand side on the front of the label. There's the DIN number, and that's how we identify that it's registered with Health Canada. ES65, this is an Enviro Solutions. It's a hydrogen peroxide disinfectant cleaner. And there's the DIN number right there on the right-hand side of this label. They also include... Uh, 
bit here about household bleach, 5% sodium hypochlorite. And remember that number. I'm going to talk about that in a second. 5% sodium hypochlorite. We are looking at the Canadian Centre for Occupational Health and Safety. They're talking about chlorine bleach. So this is right from the government of Canada. So it's not Scott the Swish guy making this up. But there's a few important things on this page that we need to talk about. Because bleach is a great disinfectant, but it requires a specialized knowledge. Otherwise, it's very dangerous and you could really hurt yourself. The first thing is when you purchase bleach, it's usually sold in concentrations of sodium hypochlorite from about 3% to 9%. So when you head to the grocery store, it's not just picking up any jug of bleach from the dollar store or Walmart or whatever. You need to make sure you've got at least 5%. If you don't have that 5% in there, it's not going to do the disinfecting job that you want it to. And I'm not going to cover all the points on here, so we'll put a link in the description below and you can come back and review this if you want. But I'm just going to touch on the highlights. Why is bleach useful? Bleach is an effective means of killing most bacteria, funguses, and viruses. Absolutely true. It is a really, really good disinfectant. As long as you're using it safely, it is a terrible cleaner. So we're only gonna use this for disinfecting. What are some steps we can take to work safely with bleach? Number one, to work safely with bleach, use a safer alternative product where possible. So just think about that for a second. So the number one recommended safety measure to working with bleach is don't work with it. Use something else. So as an alternative alternative product, what are they talking about? Well, they're talking about anything with a registered DIN number that's approved. That means it's approved by Health Canada. Know when and how to dilute the product correctly. So when? Does that mean we mix it up in the morning? Is that better? Or mix them up in the afternoon? Or what do they mean by know when? What they're talking about there, when you mix a bleach solution into your trigger bottle, bleach and water, it's only effective for 24 hours. So that means if you mix it on Monday, you've got 24 hours to use that up. Otherwise, you make a new one and they talk about how to dilute it what that means is you got to know are you mixing it 10 to 1 9 to 1 6 to 1 what's the correct ratio to dilute it into the bucket or into the trigger bottle that you're using two very important things so when you're working with bleach, wear respirators when recommended. Wear goggles or a face shield to protect your eyes and face. Wear gloves, such as household rubber gloves or neoprene gloves. I always recommend like a 6 mil nitrile glove. It's my favorite. Do not use with other products such as toilet bowl cleaners, rust removers, acids, and that includes vinegar and products containing ammonia. Here's why. When you mix bleach and vinegar, this produces chlorine gas, and this causes coughing, breathing problems, burning, and watery eyes. Bleach and ammonia produce a gas called chloramine, causes shortness of breath and chest pain. Bleach and rubbing alcohol produce chloroform, and that is highly toxic. Hydrogen peroxide and vinegar, you mix that, you'll get parasitic acid, and that is highly corrosive. So the story here is, if you choose to use bleach in your disinfecting and cleaning procedures. Make sure you follow all of these guidelines as outlined by Occupational Health and Safety so you don't hurt yourself or your staff. So I'm not going to go over the rest of this. To, uh, if you want to have a look at it in more detail or get your staff to review it, there'll be a link in the description below. So what do I need to do with all this knowledge? What the government's recommending is we clean and disinfect twice daily or whenever things are visibly soiled. Pay specific attention to high touch areas that would include light switches, doorknobs, Toilets, taps, handrails, countertops, toys, touch screens, mobile devices, keyboards, and anything else you figure where your fingers are going to be. And this, you know, I really like how they put this together. This is a good piece of information. Is there a difference between cleaning and disinfecting? Most people use cleaning, disinfecting, and sanitizing interchangeably as the same word meaning the same thing. It is not. They are different. Cleaning refers to the act of removing dirt, or we call it gross soil. So any visible dirt you can see with your eyeballs. Cleaning will take care of that. Disinfectants get applied to the surface after you've cleaned them. So it's a two-step process. Disinfectants will actually destroy or kill the germs, the bacteria that remain on the surface after you've cleaned them. Common disinfectants include bleach, like we just talked about it, quaternary ammonia, alcohol, and hydrogen per or peroxide, like hydrogen peroxide. You saw the ES65 label a little earlier there. Vinegar, tea tree oil solutions, 
are not proven to be effective disinfectants. So we can go back to ask the question, why? Well, they're not approved by Health Canada. They don't have a DIN number, a drug identification number. So if you're wanting something to disinfect, just like we talked about, it needs to have that eight-digit DIN number. One safe alternative to using bleach is the outbreak prevention program from Enviro Solutions, specifically designed to immediately respond to the risk of an outbreak such as the COVID-19 pandemic we're experiencing right now. It's recommended you clean first and then apply the solution and let it dwell for five minutes. Food contact surfaces should be rinsed with potable water. It's available in Canada and the US. The DIN number is right there. We're gonna take a look at that in a minute on the label so we know that it's registered with Health Canada. It's effective against a wide variety of broad spectrum microorganisms. It's ready to use, which means your staff does not need to mix it and the dilution will be correct all the time. It has a kill claim against Norwalk virus and it'll do that in five minutes. This one can come with an optional pump sprayer with a liter and a half capacity so you're not running back to refill it every two minutes. This uses a pump for fast pressurizing and has an instant pressure relief valve for worker safety. These pumps are specifically designed for facilities that do not have dilution control devices installed. You can use this in many different facilities, including healthcare, hospitals, medical and dental clinics, pubs, nightclubs, restaurants, buses, trains, offices, schools, daycares, all kinds of different facilities. I don't know where you wouldn't use this. ES-15 is how we kill the coronavirus. ES-15 has been pre-approved by the Environmental Protection Agency for use against the 2019 novel coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak. I'll put a link in the description below so you can check that research out. So you can see right away that this is a disinfectant and a cleaner. And the bonus there is you don't have to buy a secondary product to do the cleaning. This will do both the cleaning and the disinfecting for you. Underneath that, it identifies it as a ready to use product. Down here towards the bottom, you can see we've got the DIN number so that we know it is registered with Health Canada. Uh, the first thing it tells us is that ES-15 is effective against a wide variety, broad spectrum of microorganisms, including bacteria, antibiotic resistant bacteria and viruses, which really means it's gonna kill a whole lot of stuff. Then they tell us it's good in hospitals and healthcare settings, ambulances, CAT labs for scans, all, all kinds of different facilities. I'm not gonna go through every single thing on this label. I'll leave a link in the description below if you'd like to analyze it in more detail. And here they make a claim it is good for personal protective safety equipment, hard hats, masks, breathing apparatus. And here we've got the claim that it's good in kennels and poultry and swine barns. It also acts as a non-acid bowl and bathroom disinfectant cleaner. You can use it on toilet bowls, urinals, rims, sinks, sink basins, faucets, all that good stuff you're gonna find in the washroom. And here's the directions for use for general cleaning. So if you don't wanna disinfect and you just wanna clean, spray the soiled area, then wipe it with a dry paper towel or a clean cloth. If you're going to disinfect, the first instructions are remove gross filth or heavy soil. So that's all the dirt that you can see with your eyeballs. Get rid of it, clean it up. Once that surface is clean, allow the surface to remain visibly wet for five minutes. So give it a couple of squirts. It's gotta be wet for five minutes and it'll kill all the stuff that it says on the label here. And this is where it tells us what it's effective against. Pseudomonas eringosa, salmonella, staphylococcus, and a bunch of other ones I can't pronounce. The link is in the description if you want to have a look. One step cleaning and disinfecting of toilet bowls and urinals. Let's stand for five minutes. There's that dwell time they're talking about. It'll also disinfect food processing facilities. Clean the area and then let it dwell for five minutes. Disinfecting in food service establishments, so restaurants, nightclubs, bars, pubs, do the countertops, appliances, tables, clean it off, and then there's the dwell time again of five minutes. Kind of a recurring theme. Oh yeah, down here, it'll tell us disinfection of animal quarters and kennels. So this stuff does everything. And then it makes the claim for virucidal activity. ES-15 disinfectant spray and wipe cleaner is an effective virucide for HIV, avian influenza virus, feline calcivirus, norovirus, canine parvovirus, rhinovirus, 
all kinds of different things and the secret is the dwell time of five minutes here it makes kill claims for hiv hbv and hcv and it gives us special instructions for cleaning up blood and bodily fluids and es15 is a sanitizer on non-food contact surfaces. So to sanitize and deodorize, hold the container 15 to 20 centimeters from the surface to be treated. Spray the area until it's covered the product and allow surface to remain visibly wet for five seconds. So this is a sanitizer, this is a five second sanitizer. Clean it, spray it down five seconds, you've got a sanitized surface. That's amazing, five second sanitizer, five minute disinfectant. As a sanitizer, it is effective against Staphylococcus and Klebsiella. Kle Kle how do you say that? Klebsiella pneumoniae. Can somebody tell me how to say that in the comments? That's crazy. Let the surface dry. Five whole seconds. That's fantastic. ES15 spray and wipe cleaner will not harm most surfaces, including acrylic, sealed fiberglass, and vinyl. But do not use on unpainted wood. Clearly, this is a great alternative to using bleach. And it's got that kill claim from the EPA for COVID-19. This is something that I would want in my facility. So we get back to this page from uh, Saskatchewan government. And I, they hit all the highlights. Like, I really like this. Do not use expired products. So again, if you have something with a DIN number, like Chemsol's Erex 44, here you can see there's a spot for the expiry date. The Swish Miracle, the ready to use, cleaner and disinfectant, there's the expiry date. So let's do a quick review. What did we learn? Enveloped viruses are the most susceptible to disinfectants. That means they're the easiest to kill. Two steps, clean. Remove the eyeball soil, disinfect, let it dwell for five minutes in the case of ES15. Disinfectants have a DIN number on their label. That means they're approved by Health Canada. Bleach can be used as a disinfectant. However, bleach is dangerous and it requires a specialized knowledge found at Canadian Occupational Health and Safety website. The first safety rule on that website is use a safer alternative product than bleach. Clean and disinfect twice daily. Get after those high touch points like the light switches. ES15 is approved to destroy COVID-19. It's got a five minute dwell time to disinfect, a five second dwell time to sanitize, it can be used in all facilities. It's ready to go right out of the bottle. If you need any help choosing the correct disinfectant for your facility, leave a comment below. Otherwise, be safe, be healthy, and remember to read the label. Thanks so much for your time.